Hello and welcome. In this video we're going to learn how to sketch or graph polynomial functions to reasonable accuracy and the most useful tool in helping us achieve that is derivatives. First of all, whenever we're graphing functions it's always useful to find the points where the graph crosses the x and y axes and the y-axis is very easy to find. It's simply the constant term in the function. But to find the x-intercepts is quite difficult for polynomials, depending on their degree, because first of all we have to guess, or use trial and error to guess what a factor would be, and then once we've found that factor, or zero point, we have to use long division to, to factorize the polynomial and then use guess and check again to find another zero point and so on and so forth. And often these points don't lie on nice numbers. So they often don't lie on integer numbers along the x-axis. So if they are a decimal number it's even more difficult to find. So it's okay to be able to graph such a function only by noting where the y-axis is. So the very first thing we do is to find the y-intercept. And that's done by evaluating the function f at x equals 0. The next step is to find the critical or stationary points. And I'm going to mark these on this graph in blue. So we have a stationary point here, stationary point here, and a stationary point here. These are called stationary points because the slope of the function at these points is equal to zero. So here we have the function that is increasing. It's increasing but it is gradually the rate of increase is starting to slow down until it hits this critical point here or the stationary point and after that it starts to decrease. So at this point, and I'll mark it as A on the x-axis, the derivative of f at A is equal to zero. And similarly here, I'll call this point B along the x-axis. We have the graph that is it's decreasing but the rate of decrease is starting to slow so the graph is starting to increase again until it hits this point and it stops slowing down, hits this point where the slope is zero and afterwards it starts to increase again. So at this point the derivative is also equal to zero and similarly for our final critical or stationary point, which I'll mark as C. Again, the slope of this point is also equal to zero. So the second step is to find the critical points. And to do that, we solve the derivative function, f, f dash x, equals zero. The next step is to determine the nature of each critical or stationary point and there are three possibilities. We can have a local minimum, a local maximum or a point of inflection. So if we examine our graph again we're increasing quite rapidly here and gradually it starts to slow down until it reaches point A where we've determined that the slope is zero. So in physics we would class this as a deceleration and even though the uh, slope or the rate of change of the function here is zero the graph is continuing to slow down it's continuing to decelerate which means now after it has come to a stop it's going backwards so what this means is the second derivative of f at the point A is less than zero. 
and what this means is we have a local maximum at point B we have a local trough and this is called a local minimum and this means that the second derivative of the function at B is greater than zero we can see the graph is um, decreasing because the slope here is negative but it's starting to increase again so it's starting to accelerate and at point B even though the rate of change is zero as soon as we leave the point B the graph starts to increase again so this here is a local minimum and finally point C we have what we call an inflection point so what we say here is a second derivative at point C is equal to zero because at this point the function is neither accelerating or decelerating and whenever we have the case that the second derivative of f at a critical point is equal to zero we have a point of inflection so step three is to evaluate the second derivative of f at critical points also known as stationary points and if f double dash is less than zero we have a local min if f double dash is greater than zero we have a local minimum my apologies in the first case we actually have a local maximum so let me correct that so if f double dash at a critical point is less than zero we have a local max if it is greater than zero we have a local min and finally if f double dash is equal to zero we have a point of inflection if you are currently studying math please feel free to subscribe to my channel for future videos that may help you on exams or assignments and as always Please feel free to ask me any question by commenting on any of the videos that you've seen. Thanks for watching and I hope you've learned something.